think this is live now. And it looks like there's audio going on here. Can Let's see if people can hear me. Guys, can you hear me now? Oh, yay. <laughs> yay. All right. Did you like one more piece of boxes? <laughs> All right. Should we do some webinar, guys? Yeah. Maybe. All right. <laughs> some webinar. All right. Squeeze together. We got. We have to. We can all be. We have to pretend like we like each other. Okay. There we go. Marty, can you get closer to me? Unusual. This is kind of awesome. This is as close as we're getting. Okay. Thank God. Uh, we'll zoom with my feet. There we go. It's a little. Don't don't do this when you guys are framing your pictures. Don't <laughs> don't tilt it like that. This is an example of what not to do when taking photos for Game Face. We learn by doing at Game Face. That is All close right. enough. That is good. Looking great. All right. Is the chat room looking okay? People are. Yeah. People are studying the chat room. All I see is a big finger. It's disturbing. All I do. Yeah. <laughs> Billy, <laughs> Billy H said that. Thank you, Billy H. All right, we get started. Yep. Okay. Sorry for the delay, guys. Appreciate you bearing with the technical difficulties, but we're good to go now. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for our second, whenever we feel like it, game face webinar for our photographers around the world. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us. Uh, I want to start off by talking a little bit about what we have done this year. We've done a lot of really cool things, especially compared to what we did last year. Uh, this year, I have some numbers. We took 13.4 million pictures this year. We photographed approximately 2 million participants over 723 events. So that's pretty cool. A ton of work out there for you guys. We offered over 5,000 Photography contracts to you guys over seven countries and have them listed here. We shoot in the USA, Canada, Australia, France, Germany, the UK, and Ireland. So that's pretty cool. And uh, above all, what we noticed going through the pictures this year is that every single photo we took pretty much was better than last year. All of you guys did a really good job of, of getting out there and improving the work that you did. So that's super cool. And uh, we noticed that when we go back to our clients for renewals this year, every single client we have is incredibly happy with the work that we do. So we really, uh, at the end of the day, appreciate the work that you guys do. So the purpose of what we're going to do here today is talk a little bit about some ways that you guys can take some really spectacular pictures for us. Uh, but we're going to start uh, by going over, actually, we're not going to start with that. We're going to do one quick thing, and then we're going to uh, focus most of the time on going over the feedback that you guys sent us in uh, our recent survey that we sent out. We got a ton of feedback from you guys. We read every single one. Uh, all of it was incredibly useful, and uh, we're going to talk about some of the most common responses we got to the feedback there. So turn over to Brett. All right. So really quickly, guys, we're um, just going to go over some of the common issues that we see. Um, with photography, uh, with most of our events, um, most of the issues that we see can be kind of boiled down to um, pretty standard things. Um, the first, uh, the first thing we just wanted to talk about real quickly is to shoot tighter. Um, it's pretty frequent that we see photos that are too loose. Um, it's not very frequent that we see photos that are too tight. Um, so. I'd say in general, you just want to make sure that you're shooting tighter. Here we got, I got these perfect examples. I will hold one up to the screen right here for you guys to see. Hold it down to the screen. It's a great photo, but it can be a lot tighter. Um, just for comparison's sake, here's the shot that someone took. Here's the shot that we are looking for. Um, again, both good photos, photographically speaking, but for what we're looking for, we don't crop any of the photos, we don't edit any of the photos, anything like that. So what comes out of your camera is what we're using. So just make sure that you're framing the athletes tight in the frame. Um, 
And when you are framing the athletes tight in the frame, make sure that you're centering them in the frame as well, um, because this is another one of the really frequent problems that we have. Um, it's understandable because people uh, tend to put their autofocus point on people's faces or their chest or something like that. Um, so you tend to get people that are very off center in the frame. Um, as an example, here you go. Here's an example of a photo that you don't want to take. Um, again, here's the example of a good photo. I can, you can see those really clear and they're not blurry at all, but there you go. Um, again, just, uh, just way too much space above, um, her head and not really any space below her feet. So make sure you're not doing this when you're taking shots. You want to make sure that you're getting equal space above and below her. Um, so, and then uh, some of the other common mistakes that we see are just not necessarily thinking through your positioning that you're um, taking when you're, when you're shooting out there. Um, make sure you're getting low when you can. Um, it, we talk about it a little bit in the guide, but it really helps um, kind of give the photo a feeling or, or give the athlete a, a look of power or, you know, that they're really strong when they're running or something like that. Um, so that really helps, uh, if you're shooting a really big race, it often helps to get, um, higher up and shoot down into the crowd because then you can see past other people. Um, you know, this is generally for races that are, you know, 5,000, 10,000 people or more. Um, but we do have quite a few of those. And it, if you're in one of our more popular, um, areas, then you may have shot one of those in the past and ladders are always helpful to have. You know, if you have one for a big race, definitely think about bringing it. Um, so the bonus checklist, let's just take a quick moment, quick moment to go over this um, and remind you that the bonus checklists are only valid if you show up to the event with everything on your camera set correctly. Um, you know, we, we do the bonus checklist because we want um, to make sure everybody's on the same page before we get to the event. Um, so you know, if, if you show up and your time's wrong or your resolution's wrong and you hand in the bonus checklist, then you don't get the bonus because you kind of, you know, miss the whole point of the bonus checklist. Um, you know, we'll go over these quickly, the important, the really important things. Um, time syncing is a super quick thing for you, you to do and to make sure you have it set correctly. But if the photos come back to our office and the time is set wrong um, and it makes it through without us noticing, it's actually a huge pain and can sometimes, you know, delay the release of the photos by a couple hours or more um, just to change one photographer's um, timestamps. Resolution and JPEG settings, make sure they're correct. Um, you know, we do list the one specific for each camera. If you don't have one or if you don't have a camera that's on that list, as close to 25 or uh, 2,400 pixels on the long edge without going under. This is more for your benefit. Um, if you shoot with too high of a resolution or if your JPEG compression is set too low, then you'll run out of card space really quickly. You might have to shoot your own cards. You'll have to contact your team leader. It's just a pain. Um, auto rotate, just make sure it's on. You know, if, if you're switching back and forth to horizontal and vertical shots and auto rotate isn't on, then the processors have to go and manually rotate every one of your photos, which is just a total pain. Um, and format every single card. Um, it may not seem important for you to do it, but if the photos come back to the photo processors um, and they see photos on a card that look like they're from a running race, they might copy them over. Um, and you know what? That might be a completely different running race. So, you know, just to be safe, just so that you don't stick your, you know, camera in the card when you run out on your first one and shoot for 20 frames and realize that your card's full, just format them all at the beginning of the day. Just get in the habit of doing it and you'll be good. All right, Marty, cool. you're up next. Thanks, Brent. Um, now we're going to spend a good amount of time here talking about, as I said, the feedback that you guys sent us in the survey that we sent to all of our photographers. So many of you gave us such good feedback. Um, by far, the most common uh, piece of feedback we got was, of course, that we're awesome and amazing, and then all of you are amazing. So we'll, we'll just we'll skip over that one because it's obvious. But the second most common piece of feedback we got was that we should process your work requests faster, which we totally understand. Um, and we are actually taking some steps internally to be able to accomplish uh, accomplish this. There are some technical improvements. That, uh, that we can do to make this happen. But we are very aware 
that, uh, that sometimes uh, requests don't get processed until the week of the event. And sometimes there are reasons for this, um, but we could certainly do a better job with that. So we are absolutely looking to uh, work on this uh, starting hopefully early in 2016. Um, but that depends on how much, uh, how much stuff we can get done in the office. Cool. Um, and someone just commented, um, can you introduce yourselves? Uh, I realized we didn't introduce ourselves. <laughs> and I mean, a lot of you know who we are, but I am Brent. This is Marty and that's Heather down the end. Um, so Marty and I are the directors of photography and Heather is a logistics operations manager. What's your official title? Hey, photography operations manager. Yeah, photography operations manager. Um, so again, back to kind of some of the, the um, survey responses that we got. Um, one of the other common themes we saw is they, people want um, assignments to be sent out sooner. Um, and trust us, if you know, we could send out assignments sooner, we would be sending them out sooner. Um, a lot of the times we're just waiting on information from race directors. Like a lot of things are completely dependent on the court or, or the race sending them to us. Um, and a lot of the times these races aren't finalizing their courses, especially obstacle courses. They don't finalize them until, you know, two days before the event. Um, and it's important for us to know that so that we can make sure we are assigning you to the correct obstacles just because we have a lot of experience um, in what obstacles photograph well, you know, where on the course we should uh, shoot that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, we are sending them through generally, you know, when we can, um, we just ask that you be patient and, uh, just wait for, wait for the assignments to be sent through again. Apologize if they're ever sent late. We wish we could send them in a, as early as possible. I think our, our, the game face CEO just stepped in. Come on over and say hi, David. David LaValle <laughs> just stepped up. So if he's going to say a few words to everybody. The only way I could ever become CEO is to start my own tiny little company. So. <laughs> um, but thank you to all of you guys. Um, thanks for joining us. And also, um, it's just been an unbelievable year. The quality of the photography and what we've produced has just been off the charts this year. So it's been really fun to get to know a lot of you guys personally and to see your work every week. But thank you, thank you. Um, we could not do this without you. And it's been fun to watch the progress. So. David has he, David has looked at dozens of our photos <laughs> this year. So <laughs> he's taken dozens of photos. He's taken he has, he's, photos. You've taken hundreds of photos. <laughs> <laughs> hundreds. Thank you guys. Thanks for stopping yeah. in, David LaValle, CEO of Game Face Media. <laughs> All right, so back to uh, survey responses. Um, another very common theme that I totally understand is that all of you want feedback on your work. Uh, again, uh, as I said earlier, we're taking steps internally to accomplish this. We, we do uh, review everyone's photos after the event, but at this time we just haven't uh, made the review system public yet, so we are gonna work on that. But we absolutely understand the importance that all of you place on you wanting to improve your work and, and deliver the best quality product to our clients. So we're absolutely on the same page with you there. It's just a technical thing and hopefully we'll be able to roll that out uh, in 2016 for you guys. Um, you also said you want a chance to give us feedback, um, you know, whether it's specifically us or whether it's team leaders at your event. Um, we think that's really important as well, along the same lines of what Marty was saying. Um, and we think it'll definitely help improve our product. Um, so again, you know, we're, we're going to be working to make some improvements in uh, some technological improvements where, you know, we're implementing a system that will allow you guys to submit anonymous feedback um, about other photographers, about um, the team lead, about the event itself, about Marty and I, uh, about Heather, if anybody ever wants to complain about Heather, which is unlikely. Um, so again, just uh, stay tuned. We got a lot of uh, potentially exciting improvements uh, coming in 2016. So yep, that is the way. And again, thank you guys for um, pointing this stuff out because it lets us know how important it is to you. The next point we want to talk about, uh, a common uh, piece of feedback we got, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase, is that I'm, uh, you would say, I'm afraid to turn down work because I don't want to be penalized. Uh, that's, a, that's a reasonable uh, concern. However, we, we totally understand that so many of you make your full-time living 
doing this and you book your schedule sometimes further in advance than we are able to send you jobs. So there is absolutely never any penalty at all if you have to turn down an official job offer. Now, there is a distinction in our system between uh, uh, if you put in a work request and an official job offer. When you put a work request into our system, that's simply telling us I may be interested in the event and at this time I am probably available for it. Uh, If we decide to put you on the event, we will send you an official job offer and you can confirm or decline that official job offer. So there's that distinction there. Uh, The only time we ever consider uh, penalties is if you actually sign a contract to shoot an event with us and then you back out of that signed uh, agreement. So that's the only time that that would happen. But if we ever send you a job offer, we, we totally understand if you have to turn it down. We know you're busy and it's not a big deal to us. As long as you, you know, do it reasonably promptly. I mean, even if not, not a huge deal. Um, another common question uh, that we get is how do I become a team lead? Um, the most important thing here, I think, is just to be a good core shooter first off, um, be part, be an active part of the game phase team, um, communicate with Marty, Heather and I professionally. Um, and, you know, I think the most important thing that we look for besides that is just having a strong artistic portfolio. Um, I'm going to share a little story that, uh, I have from when I was actually thinking about applying a sports shooter years back, um, and posted my photos on a forum for critique. Um, and, and I think actually it may have been uh, Bert that came in and, and critiqued me. And his critique was, um, you know, they're all great photos, but it's all exactly the same photo. Um, if you can picture, you know, a football player, you know, running with the football, uh, a tight shot, you know, a loose shot, whatever, full body shot, um, you know, you want different angles, you want uh, different focal lengths, you want, you know, to show use of artificial light all this kind of stuff, Um, the more diverse your portfolio is, uh, the more it shows that you have a commanding of these different concepts in photography, and the more likely you are to be asked to step into the team leader role, because a big part of the team leader role is um, shooting promotional photography, which is honestly what separates us a lot from our competitors. So, um, if you are interested in that team leader role, make sure you look at your portfolio. Um, you know, not to, um, you know, we're not trying to toot our own horns, but if you look at Marty and my portfolio, um, as well, they're the best portfolios absolutely on the planet. Um, but it is a good example of the, the style that we look for as well as the versatility, um, of, you know, shooting with, 400 millimeter lens versus shooting with a 14 millimeter lens. Um, So just take a look at that kind of stuff and, you know, you'll hopefully get a good idea of what it takes to be a good promotional photographer. And the most important thing is uh, if we need a team leader, we'll generally contact you um, because we noticed that you've been doing a great job at all these things and uh, we've been keeping our eye on you. Oh, um, another a question we got uh, from some of you guys is when I'm at a game face event, uh, how do I take a break? Which, you know, you just go and take a break. Uh, sometimes our team leaders will be able to relieve you. Uh, so you can take a break, but usually not. Usually we keep our team leaders uh, pretty busy and they're not able to, to wander around to your position. So just, just leave your post, take a break. Uh, if you're going to be gone for, uh, you know, more than like five, 10 minutes, you know, then, then think about what you're doing. But, um, we understand that, you know, you have to take a break sometimes. So just go, uh, we know that there's going to be gaps in the coverage. Our clients understand that it's, uh, not a huge deal. So just take your breaks. Cool. Cool. I think that that covered most of the questions that we had and most of the feedback that we got from our, um, photographer survey. So, We just wanted to cover um, a couple other quick points, Uh, things that seem silly, things that seem like we shouldn't really have to go over them, but um, we are seeing it a little bit. So we just wanted to take the time um, to address them. Don't take any extra photos on your cards. Um, These include pictures of your hands, pictures of um, other photographers, pictures without any people in them. 
you know, it's fine for you to take them, I guess, if you want, but if you're going to take them, make sure you're deleting them from your card um, because uh, the last thing we need is just a picture of another photographer or a selfie or anything like that ending up um, in the racer's photo album just because it just doesn't look very professional from uh, Game Face's point of view. Um, and Marty, do you want to touch on the next point? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, one uh, exception... I was looking at the questions. You talked about this? Yeah. Okay. No. I don't know. Um, <laughs> the, the, the only exception to the extra photos, just real quick, is if you have multiple uh, course photography assignments, then it's okay to take photos in between the two assignments as like a separator photo. That actually makes it easier for us to process those pictures. So uh, if you're going to do that, just like cover the lens so you get a blank shot or just take a picture of your hand or, or write, this is a separator photo on a piece of paper. I don't really care. But that's the... Um, that's the only time we really need extra pictures. So we want clean cards uh, back to our team leads at the end of the day. That's and super what, important. Yeah, and what Marty means by that, just to clarify, is you know if you're shooting, um, say the monkey bar is at a tough matter or is your first assignment, and then you move to the electroshock therapy, um, just taking a few blank frames in between that is fine, and it does help separate the photos. I would not recommend taking selfies as the photos in between then, but a few blank frames uh, work pretty well. Um, all right, so uh, now we are going to cover some questions that we've been getting throughout the webinar. Um, yeah. Um, Heather, do you want to read them out to us? Sure. sure. Heather can pick. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, our first one was talking about... Um, in the guidebook uh, settings that our photographers should follow uh, if they can. Um, this is a question about picture styles, so like saturation. Do you yep. have any specifics about that sort of stuff? Sure. Yeah, I mean, we don't have any specific um, settings that we look for. Um, like we said, I think the most important thing is just to remember that unlike the photos that you're taking for your personal use, these aren't getting edited before they, they go to our clients. So it's important to make the photos look good coming straight out of camera. So sometimes we see people that have their contrast settings way too low, their saturation way too low. Um, and again, they don't get edited before they get to the client. Uh, on the other side, we sometimes do see people with their contrast and saturation set way too high. Um, and you need to be careful for that as well. But, you know, boosting the contrast and boosting the saturation up a little bit probably won't, won't hurt at all. Um, it's just helpful to kind of review them, look on your screen, see if you can do some in-camera editing to make the photos pop a little more, more before um, you hand them back to your team leader at the end of the day. Um, when photographing a busy race like our Thanksgiving Day um, races that we just had, which mm -hmm. are huge and a lot of people are coming at you in a mob, um, should our photographers focus on quantity or quality? That's a, a great question. Um, it's a little bit of a false dichotomy because our best shooters are able to find the appropriate balance between quality and quantity. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're at a Thanksgiving race where you have 30,000 runners and you come back with 800 perfect photos, that's nice, but you know, we, we do need more photos than that. And then on the other side of the coin, if you come back with 11,000 photos that are 90% mediocre, you know, our clients are not going to be pleased with that either. So it's, it's a great question and it's something that you should be thinking about uh, trying to find that perfect balance. Uh, certain events is going to be easier than others, but uh, of course for these large events, that, that really is the primary challenge of what we're doing is finding that balance between quality and quantity. So that's a good question. It's also important to remember that we have a lot of photographers out on course for this specific reason where you're not responsible for photographing every single person in the race, you know? If, if it's a race of 65,000 people, like Boulder, Boulder, I mean, if you get one-tenth of the runners or one-twentieth of the runners, you're going to be lucky. So focus on getting, you know, good quality shots, but also getting quite a few of them. And don't just fire off crappy frames um, just because you're trying to get the people. Um, let's see, Brent, you kind of touched on this a little, you talked about a uh, photographer feedback system mm -hmm. coming into place, and I know this was a big concern we had. Um, people wanted to be able to see the photos that they took, yeah. um, and so people are asking, is there, will there be a way to see pictures that they shot? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, we can definitely we can definitely look into that um, as part of the review system. Um, we haven't fully conceptualized the review system just yet, um, and we're still kind of in the beginning stages of planning it. Um, so we'll definitely keep that in mind when we're we're talking about what we kind of want this system to look like. We have some ideas, um, but that's definitely a good idea as well. Um, for a technical question, if someone's thinking about upgrading their camera body, would you recommend crop or full frame? You know, that's another great question. Um, for the work that we do here, since we're shooting in such uh, low resolution, some of these new crop bodies are so good and they focus so quickly and they provide such value to the photographer that honestly, uh, cameras like the D7200 and the Canon 7D Mark II they're just fantastic for the work that we do. Now, generally, photography-wise, uh, of course, I'm going to recommend the full-frame camera. But I know that that's not always in everyone's budget. And you know, certainly there are some shooting situations where the crop body may actually make a little bit of sense. But uh, if, if you're coming to game base events with a crop sensor camera, totally fine. Love it. As long as it's a uh, decent crop sensor camera. Like I said, the 7D Mark II is fantastic. The D seventy one seventy two hundreds that I can make are great. Yeah. Cool. Great. Um, there's a couple questions, kind of asking about the other side of Game Face, where getting events um, in our sales department and uh, how we get location. Um, so it's kind of go hand in hand. Um, what is the policy on the sales department on getting more events? And I see a lot of events in, in a particular area we're not covering. Um, and I think this also goes with another question. Is there a way to keep the same events year to year? And I, I think it'd be helpful. Like, how do, how do we plan that on our end um, with the sales? And well, the sales team is actually trying to get less events every year. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Of course, the sales team is, is trying to get as many events as they can. Um, but you also have to realize that, you know, what is the case for your specific region, um, you know, might not be the case for other regions. And it just also has to do with how many races are in any, any specific regions of the U S you know, hotbeds like Chicago, New York, uh, Los Angeles, um, you know, in pretty much anywhere in Texas, you know, they have a ton of events and events or Montana and the Dakotas, you know, might not have any events. Um, you know, it's, Part of it is just where the events happen, but our sales team is always trying to get more events. So, um, unfortunately, I think that's the best <laughs> that's the best explanation we have for you right now. I just have to wait for sometimes contracts to run out with other companies. So yeah. They get in there, not. Yeah. Um. All right. Um. What about runners mugging for the camera? Should we shoot them? So, like, I guess if they're. Um, Playing around, or I guess is the question asking more about Canon photos, or is it okay to take more posed photos? Sure. Um, often, when uh, you're positioned in an obstacle, as I'm sure you figured out, you'll encounter people that you know are like, "Hey, take my picture away from the obstacle," you know, and and. As a general rule, we can accommodate this to a degree. I mean, if there's a ton of people going over the fire jump at the same time, you might want to use your social engineering skills to, to have them wait until you have a gap in the coverage. Um, but if it's slow, you know, you can certainly indulge them. So um, I would encourage that. If people, if, I mean, everybody has probably run into this situation if they've photographed a game face event um, or photographed multiple game face events. If someone comes up to you and is standing five feet away from you when you're on 200 millimeters and says, take my photo, just literally press the button, pretend you're taking a photo of them so they go away and then delete the photos and go back to shooting. They'll forget. Away. They will forget. And, you know, it's much better than getting in an argument with them or, you know, being telling them to them. stand back 200 yards. Yeah, because then, you know, I mean, you can do that if nobody's really coming through. But, I mean, your main goal is to just get back to the task at hand, really. Um, so... You have my permission. Just tell him Brent said it was fine. <laughs> um, if, if, a group a of friends, <laughs> if a group of friends comes through that are obviously together, are people allowed to shoot them in landscape or just to put portrait and do one or two, whatever you can? 
I mean, personally speaking, uh, I find it pretty, again, it depends, I guess, on the size of the race. If it's a really slow race and absolutely you can, you can shoot, um, landscape, you can actually go for a tighter landscape shot as well. Like just an upper body shot. Um, I personally find it's pretty difficult to switch really quickly between the two. Um, so if it isn't a larger race, I would recommend potentially just, you know, keeping your camera on vertical. You can zoom out. This is one of those circumstances where if everybody's running together, it's okay to shoot a little bit looser to get everybody in the frame. Um, but yeah, if you have time, go for it. Um, but if you don't have time, just zoom out a little bit. Um, let's see, how much do you care if the backgrounds are straight? Um, do you want things like buildings perfectly vertical um, or do you just care about the athlete? That's a really good question. Uh, usually our athlete is mostly vertical. So uh, at running races, it, it just makes sense to keep your camera completely vertical. Uh, now, there are some times where in an obstacle race, you may be uh, photographing the athlete on a little bit of an angle. Uh, I would I would use your judgment in those cases. Uh, generally, though, it's going to look a little bit funny if the camera is not uh, mostly vertical or horizontal. So I would just keep that in mind, you know, review the shots in the back of your camera and, uh, make the necessary adjustments. But for the most part, you know, when the athlete is standing up, uh, you should be shooting in portrait mode, uh, with the camera completely vertical. Wouldn't recommend the Dutch angles either. Don't just like tilt every frame just for the sake of tilting every yeah. frame. Um, you know, it works for promotional photography, but it, to see it again and again and again in course photography, um, it just, it looks People who aren't photographers aren't, they get confused by it, basically. <laughs> uh, let's see, for those of us who are well-versed with strobes or flashes, uh, would you consider extra compensation? Is that necessary? Um, to be honest, in most races, it's really, really difficult to use strobes well. Um, so you would, I'd say if, if you're thinking about doing it, run it by us first um, and we can discuss it with you. Um, I've personally tried to strobe races before and I think Marty has tried to strobe, you know, course photos before. Um, and it's really, really difficult to pull it off again and again and again for each athlete and to make a consistent product, which is what we're all about. So, um, yeah. The, the, the primary issue, there's two primary issues with strobing. One is lack of access to power which is true at virtually every race we attend. We can't guarantee that you'll have a power source at the race. And second is the moment you introduce artificial light into the scene, you're, you're limiting the area on the planet in which you can correctly photograph the mm -hmm. athlete. You know, if, if you set up one strobe with just like a simple seven inch reflector on it, you, you really, especially in full sunlight, you have maybe a 10 by 10 foot uh, square and at the vast majority of our events, you're going to be covering an area much larger than that. And even within that 10 by 10 window, there's a ton of variation. So we usually do not encourage the use of strobes uh, for our course photographers. Uh, now, there are a few exceptions. Uh, rarely, if we can know that we have access to power in like a festival area, we may have a festival photographer use a, a strobe or a heavy flash setup. But that's very rare. And of course, our promotional shooters uh, often will use strobes, but that's again, as, as Brent touched on, uh, because they have the flexibility to move around and bring a small battery pack and take 10 pictures to find one that works. So uh, very long answer to the question. Uh, generally, we don't have our course photographers use strobes. Yeah. Again, if you're thinking about it, just let us know and chat with us a little bit. We're more than happy to discuss it with you and um, figure out whether it'll work. Um, I have a kind of specific question for obstacles where you get a lot of people at once, um, like with slides, people going down parallel. Mm -hmm. um, if it's, it can be hard to gauge, you know, who's coming when, if you get several at a time, do you have suggestions for shooting those obstacles a little better? Uh, those, those are particularly difficult obstacles. We see that at races such as, for example, Rugged Maniac and Savage Race, which have very similar obstacles, which have very wide slides at the top. And oftentimes the volunteers will send five, six, seven people down at the same time. It's difficult. And when we review your photos, we certainly understand the difficulty of these situations. Um, the, the, the safest way to do it is to get, if it's obviously a group, then you can get a wide shot of them as they're starting. Um, but we do like to see individual photos of people as they go down. If you miss somebody, you know, we, we understand. Um, but that safe shot is nice to get as well. What are your thoughts, Brent? Um, yeah, I mean, 
if you shoot enough of them, you kind of learn, you learn the reactions of people and kind of can learn to judge when they're going to go and when they're not going to go. Um, you know, just to touch on what we had said before, just make sure that you're shooting tight. Um, it often is difficult to gauge and it's a bit like, you know, shooting field sports in the sense that you don't really know where the ball is going to go at any given time. Um, so it's actually, you know, quite analogous to that. It might help you with the field sports. And if you do shoot a lot of football or lacrosse or anything like that, you might find it easier to shoot these slides. Um, and of course, if you're shooting, you know, I shoot with my left eye, so I can't do this. But if you shoot with your right eye, you can keep your left eye open. Um, you shoot with your left eye? Yeah, it's my dominant eye. Um <laughs> But if, if you do have your, if you do shoot with your right eye, you can keep your left eye open and you can kind of see what's going on. And then as soon as somebody starts to slide, you can, you know, close your left eye and zoom in and take the shot. Um, that's a technique that's used pretty often in uh, team sports as well. Um, let's see, other companies will pay you um, a fee for bringing your own ladder to use. I, I think we did this at a couple turkey trots uh, this mm -hmm. past weekend. Uh, will Game Face consider payment for bringing other miscellaneous equipment? Um, I'll take this one. Um, so if we need you to bring your ladder, we will uh, often offer to pay for it. Um, it really comes down to whether you want your photos to be better or not. Um, and it's a, conscious, it's a conscious decision on your part. Um, you know, for example, like to compare it to promo photographers, we don't pay our promo photographers to bring strobes. They bring strobes because they're going to make better photos if they bring strobes. Um, so a lot of it's that just um, wanting to improve your photography and wanting to improve the set of images that you give us. And we do notice if people go above and beyond. Um, so in a sense, it, it might not pay off immediately, but it's more of a long-term investment. And if you notice you're getting more gigs because you start bringing ladders to events and you start to get more photos, um, you know, just think of it more of a long-term investment if we're not you know, telling you we're gonna pay you to bring ladders or any other equipment. Um, I have a shooter who's concerned about when our runners don't display their bib numbers and it's cold out and they put sweaters on. Is there really anything we can do about that on our end? There's not a ton we can do, especially at the larger events where you have a fraction of a second with each runner. Uh, at certain events where the uh, runners are moving more slowly uh, through the course, you know, you can encourage them to you know, lift their head up, to, to smile for you, to show you their bib. Um, but I... You know, you, you should be focusing on the pictures that you're taking, and if someone happens to have their bib on their back, you know, it's, it's, it's probably not worth a ton of effort to try and correct that. But at the same time, if you do have the time to, to get them to display their bib number, for example, if you're taking group shots in a festival area, we absolutely encourage that, and that's a great idea. Yeah. In the end, it just comes down to them. I mean, if they didn't wear their bib on the outside, then they get to spend half an hour searching through all their photos. Um, you know, that's just... It's on them at that point. It's not on you. And our website makes it reasonably easy to search for photos by time and by obstacles. So it's not the end of the world. And starting to wind down on questions. Um, but most importantly, who's the better shooter, <laughs> Brent or Marty? <laughs> Uh, our styles are so different. <laughs> yeah, it's kind just, of comparing apples to oranges. Um, you're, I, I've used the word for your style, Brent, uh, ethereal. Oh, God, here we go. Well, no, it's true. Because, you know, <laughs> your photos, they, they're they they're much more serene and contemplative of, of, of the world around you. So I, I appreciate that in your work very much. Marty, your your photos are much more intense than mine are. Um, and I actually use... I use your shooting style is a perfect example of what someone like Rugged Maniac really wants is they want that kind of in your face, uh, high contrast, um, you know, using artificial light, you know, people with lots of energy like that is Marty's style. Um, and that's not my style at all. And it actually, I think, is very much reflected in our personalities as well. Um, and that probably leads to why that is our specific style or why those are our specific styles. Um, but in general, I think Marty's a better photographer. I, dude, <laughs> you've been you've been doing this for a long time, man. I think you're. I don't know. I, I'd say it's a toss up, to be honest with you. But like you said, Brent, it's it's apples and oranges. I Do think you, Heather is better than both of us. Actually. Heather's definitely <laughs> better than both of us. Um, no question. Oh yeah. Totally. <laughs> 
Um, all right. Last couple of questions. These two kind of go hand in hand. We, we do a lot of ops courses um, and marathons and fun runs. Uh, now I think photographers are starting to see that the Captain Morgan promotional races, we've been having some CrossFits. Are we going to do more of those or expand out into other genres? I, well, certainly for the most part, uh, Game Face is uh, a, a sports focused company. Now we have been branching out a little bit into some more uh, uh, event focused things. But uh, for the most part, our concentrations in this coming year are going to be uh, traditional running races, uh, obstacle races, uh, triathlons, uh, CrossFit, and some uh, some of these other promotional opportunities. So there's not a ton of, of urgent expansion into other sectors. There are plenty of other companies that do that well. But we focus on what we do well, which is taking pictures of amateur endurance sport athletes. Great answer. Great. And I think that actually about winds it down. Um, We're done with questions. <laughs> think unless anyone has any last minute, um, we got most of them here. Cool. Did we get the game face vests that aren't extra, extra, extra large? <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Um, we, no, unfortunately, there's just uh, there's already so many logistics to take care of. We can't um, worry about you know, sending the wrong size vest to events. So unfortunately you're just, you, you might have to look unflattering for those two hours that you're shooting with us, but don't worry. I mean, Marty and I wear them as well. So we're right there with you. <laughs> yep. All right. So that it for questions? Yeah. For anybody that's oh. saying that they're late, um, we're going to be hopefully broad. Are you recording this? As yeah, well? this yeah. Is, this is being recorded on our on our YouTube channel. Yep. So this is going to get archived, and we'll put the link uh, straight into our uh, scheduling system. Hopefully, I'll try to figure out how to cut out the technical issues at the beginning. Um, but once we do that, it'll be nice and tidy for you guys to review uh, at your convenience. Yep. And we also um, just put up a new Game Face new contract or orientation handbook. So it covers a lot of things that um, we covered before or that you're probably used to at this point. But if you are a new contractor, um, go and check that out. That's under the contractor handbooks link. And uh, hopefully that'll that as well as the FAQ. Oh, we didn't mention the FAQ. Oh, we got to mention the FAQ. <laughs> um, the FAQ is an FAQ. Um, it has a lot of frequently asked questions. Well, let's be fair, none of, none of the questions we got today were actually in the FAQ, so that's yeah. good. So um, if you have any other questions about that, you can also see that from the contractor handbook section of the scheduling application, which is located at rm.gamefacemedia.com. Um, yep. Cool. Great. All right, well, thank you guys so much for uh, giving us an hour of your time tonight. Really appreciate that. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you out at a Game Face event soon. Jeremy Buck, you cannot buy a medium-sized vest. Jeremy, <laughs> go to bed. <laughs> Just use an extra large like everybody else does. Just put safety pins in the back <laughs> like the other small people do. All Thanks right, bye, guys. Question, Jeremy. Great. Thank you, everyone. Hey, guys. How do I turn this off? Can you copy the chat? Yeah, how do we stop this? How do we stop this? You can hang out if you want to. I'm just going to cover it with my thumb. (laughs) (laughs) Just fumble around.